There's so much excitement in my studio today because I have a big deal on, on my couch, right? She's the... <laughs> Why you look like that? Her name is Peace Hyde. She's a media entrepreneur, um, founder of Aim Higher, an NGO, and also an executive at Forbes Africa. And recently, she has an amazing show on Netflix that we are all watching. It's Young, Famous, and African. She's a creator and also an executive producer of that show. Welcome to Tea with a Pod. The way you hyped me, I owe you money. Right? Girl, you owe me money. I, actually, I should never say that. <laughs> <laughs> After this, I'm going to collect my money. No problem. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. I'm a bit tired, but I'm, I'm, I'm pushing through. I'm pushing through. It's been an intense few days. I can imagine like you're up and about all over the world trying to do interviews, trying to talk about the work that you've done. Yeah. Speaking of work that you've done, right? I've I've known you from afar, like Instagram. This is the first time I'm actually meeting the I person. know, the I'm Red f- Cup man. Yeah. Finally in the flesh. I've been following each other for the longest time. So, you know, I know you as Peace from Forbes. But today I just went on Wikipedia and I read about all the work that you've been doing. And it's amazing to see that there's so much you're doing that we don't even talk about. So I read somewhere that you have two shows with Forbes, not just even the the one that you interview billionaires. You also have an NGO that's trying to eradicate or that's focused on education for young people and entrepreneurship. How do you fit in in all these, like in these big shoes? There's too many things that you do. How do you even cope? Um, I think it's really very... Uh, passion led yeah and i think when you're doing things that you enjoy you will get tired but you will keep going because you're passionate about mm. it and so a lot of the things that i have done throughout my journey has really just been uh, a difference between number one faith walking because you never really know what yeah. tomorrow is going to look like but you just keep following that that voice that motivation that drive to make an impact and also just being blessed to do what I really, really love, um, which means being my best self and making an impact through whatever work I do. And I think that's really what keeps pushing me. But I don't feel like I'm doing a lot. I just feel like, I always feel like there's more to go. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I I know that feeling. But it's so interesting because I also read somewhere that you were formerly a teacher in the UK. And at some point you packed your bags. Yeah. You moved to Africa to become a media entrepreneur, the audacity. <laughs> Where did that come from? Is, is, was that faith? Um, was, was that you walking out in faith and saying, you know what, this is my next move? Um, I mean, I was, I was teaching for a while yeah. and I did very well in that profession. I thoroughly loved it. But I just felt like, you know, you can't keep on addressing a room of young teenagers. They're about to go to university. You're telling them that the world is at their feet. They can be anything they want to be. And you're not actually living an example of Mm. that. And that always used to convict me when I used to say to them, you know, you can be anything you want to be, you know, follow your dreams. And I'm teaching and I loved it, but I felt like I, I was also not being audacious and following my dreams, Mm. but I kept on encouraging others to do that. Um, And the point where my father passed away was really an eye-opening moment where I felt like, you know, you wake up every day and you assume you're going to meet your friend for lunch. You're assuming you're going to get home safely. You're assuming that tomorrow morning is planned. You're assuming your haircut's going to happen next week, but it can really just be all gone in a second. And that was where I decided that, yeah, I'm going to do this on my terms and I'm going to stop being in this rat race, being safe and really see what it looks like when I follow my best self. Um, And that took me to Ghana where he was buried. Um, And literally I just decided what is the thing that I've always wanted to do. Um, Originally I was delusional enough to think I could act. (laughs) Wow. Intense. It was intense. How bad it was. Of course I did. I auditioned. No, I was going for the big leagues. I went for Moa Badu. She Love had um, Desperate Housewives Wait. back then. It was years ago. She got the rights to do Desperate Housewives yes, for yes, Africa. I remember. And I auditioned for Brie Van de Kamp. Um, I got down to the final mm. audition, but unfortunately never made it. Um, and then I um, auditioned for MTV Sugar. And yeah. I got casted um, where I played myself in a bad wig, basically. And I realized like, this is just not my strength. This is really not, I'm not, it's not my calling. I loved it, but I just 
what I feel I'm too aware of myself to be able to have that skill to transform. Mm. Whereas when you look at some of the greatest act, actors that we celebrate, they're amazing at transforming into different characters yeah. and really taking you on that journey. But I just saw me pretending and I was just like, girl, sit down. Um, so I, yeah, that never really happened, but media did. And um, it kind of sparked a whole new life changing journey for me. Okay, so media wasn't your first stint when you came back. It was acting first. It was acting. Really? Yeah. yeah. So wait, Forbes happened after all this auditioning and everything. Totally after. Totally after. Um, so what happened with Forbes was I just found that when I arrived mm-hmm. in Africa, um, specifically Ghana, I was very... I was presented in a way that I felt wasn't authentic to who I was. And I couldn't understand the media game to understand why I felt I was being projected in a way that wasn't true to myself. And so I was really passionate about learning media. And I felt that as a teacher, education is the best way. Mm -hmm. So I already had my degree. I have two degrees. So I thought, okay, let me do a master's. Um, And so when I did my master's in journalism, I had to write for a publication that publishes your work. So I thought Forbes is my dream. I'm obsessed with inspiring stories. So I thought, let me try and write for Forbes. And I applied, I applied, I applied. I ended up getting the opportunity to write for the Ghanaian region um, and covering entrepreneurs from Ghana. And yeah, the kind of started off there. Um, after writing with them for about a year, I got promoted to the West African Correspondent, which is where I came to Nigeria and then started writing those stories. In that time was where um, we, myself and actually the, my co-creator for Young, Famous and African, we created Forbes TV, where we pitched to the company that, look, we felt like we could show these stories in a visual sense. Wow. Um, and we wanted to create content that celebrated these amazing entrepreneurs from a visual sense, because I'm a visual learner. I learn mm. better than reading so, when I'm looking, sorry. Yeah. So, um, yes, we created Forbes My Worst Day, mm. which looked at... Um, kind of the success stories, the tycoons in business and how Mm. they overcame their worst day and how they survived. And it was really a masterclass of the greatest of the greatest. We interviewed the likes of Aliko Dangote, Mm. Folorun Shale Kija, Rabiu Samad, um, just to name a few. Um, And then we then went on to develop the second show, which was Against All Odds, which really looked at the women impacting industries in Africa. And that was amazing and eye-opening as well. And I kind of felt very comfortable in that interviewer seat where I had the opportunity to learn from a front row from most exceptional people. And yeah, the, it kind of kept going in that direction and we left the acting where it deserved, <laughs> to be honest, to <laughs> be. to better things. Like I, hearing you now, I'm so inspired because it feels like the trajectory was so fast and smooth, right? But I, wanted, I want to know, did you, did you have any background in writing? Did you know that, you know, I mean, I mean, you're a teacher. I mean, you sort of do like a bit of writing and um, teaching, but did you really have a background in writing? And why did you think that you could excel at Forbes almost? Um, I don't actually. I actually am dyslexic, which means I'm very bad with writing and reading. Um, And it was a nightmare. I'm telling you the truth. It was a nightmare in studying and even as a teacher because it's very book heavy. It's very textbook heavy. But I excelled because most youth are visual learners. They like to learn by doing. Mm. And that's one of my best ways to learn. So Mm. I could communicate with them exceptionally well because we were all on the same page. Um, But when it came to Forbes, I had spent so much of my younger years reading. I'm still young. Let me just... (laughs) (laughs) Um, So much of my not long ago younger years reading. And I just felt like I want to be able to write these stories. And through doing a master's in journalism, you really have to just find the systems and structures that enable you to write and be comfortable doing that. Mm. And so I really use that course as an opportunity to kind of fine tune it. Mm. And I really do take my time with each and every single story. Mm. Um, But I really felt the, the premise of this journey into media was to basically face every single setback or um, doubt that I had, or even preconceived notion of who I am and what my abilities were Mm. and basically just throw it out and, and reform that. And so that's really why, um, the out, I, I kind of went into things that wasn't necessarily my skill set or my strength and then built the skill set and armed myself with education and experience to become good at it. Um, and yes, I mean, it's taken me very exceptionally far by God's grace and, um, 
yeah, when big moments happen, I stand there thinking, gosh, if you guys knew how, how I used to struggle to write these this stories. Is so, so it was really exciting. Ooh. This is so inspiring. Like, I'm listening to you and I can literally connect with this story. And it's amazing because this is you who is dyslexic and you're doing all these things. And I mean, from, from outside, we don't even know that you have any struggles. You just, no. I just see peace, the go-getter, the one who's making these moves. I, I'm really curious, right? At every point, you just went in the direction of what you wanted to do, right? What inspires your next move? How are you sure that you're going to even be successful at the next thing you're trying to do? Because it seems like you're just moving from one thing to another. You've done great work with Forbes. Now you're doing Young Famous and Africa. We're going to get into that, but I want to know why somebody like you, who was a teacher who moved into Forbes, how do you know that after writing all these amazing stories, it was time to go to visuals? How do you know that this was my next move? When to make the next move? Um, I think it's because I never saw it as a move. I'm not trying to build a profile. I'm not trying to be wildly famous. I'm not trying to be um, sort of this renowned big voice that everyone acknowledges and listens to i'm not trying to be um anything but my best self if i could achieve it or if i could acquire this and Mm. nobody in the world knows it happens would you do it and every time the answer is yes and when it's yes i tend to go into it more focused on achieving the best possible um outcome of what i've put in as opposed to ah if i get this then you'll mm. see and, and then, no <laughs> oppression is not my style i think it's more about just i'm extremely extremely obsessed with being the best i can be mm. and i don't entertain anything that doesn't contribute to that um as harsh or focused as that might sound yeah. that is my number one mo and so when i go into a new idea or when i go into a new challenge or an opportunity to grow or do something i've never done before it's really because i just want to see if hey has god has god downloaded this new program to upgrade <laughs> the model um yeah. but i'm really obsessed with just trying to be the best that god has made me and um i really am grateful for the opportunities i've been blessed with Um, I'm really grateful for the reaction and reception of those opportunities. But most Mm. importantly, I really hope that when people see what I'm doing and what I'm trying to achieve, that they understand that number one, it's got nothing to do with me. Cause at this point I'm still on a movie set trying to work out why I can't act. Cause that was the original plan. Um, so (laughs) everything else for me is really a God move. And Mm. I feel like that's why when things do play out, everyone's like, peace, how did you know? And I'm like, I'm still trying to work out. How the hell that? That's my life piece. Because they, they keep asking me what you're doing, what you're doing. No, you show. Like, your level I, is different. Like, I don't know what I I'm saw doing, one piece. video. I don't know. I think it must have been like a year and a half ago. Yeah. With a red cup. And it was on my explore page. And it was just, you see guys. <laughs> and I was thinking, who is this guy with a red cup? And I kept on going. I didn't even follow. I didn't like. I just kept yeah. on moving. And then I went back and I saw another video. And you were like, you had gone viral with this video. I said, ah, but why is this guy always carrying a red cup? My Went to his page and I started just looking through. And I feel like when I look at you anyway, personally, I see that same, that God factor. Yeah. The energy is different. We can all carry cups and speak, but it just doesn't translate my in the sister, way you want does. You and I think that's what it is. Flesh and blood my... did not reveal this to you. Let's talk about, let's, let's get into God for a second, right? Because, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's my show. I can do that, right? <laughs> so, um, you're very big on your faith. Like, yeah. like when I go on your page, I see God is God that I'm just like, yeah. yes, that's my sister. I can connect with you. But the, your entire journey, did you realize at some point that you needed God or was it the, the fact that you're very big on your faith, was it born out of the fact that, I mean, this kind of journey that I'm on, I need God to take me through or you've just been that girl who has just been very dependent on God from beginning. No, I mean, I've always been aware of God because I grew up in a, a very African household. My yeah. mom is like, you know, Sister Mary on steroids. She loves all of that God stuff. <laughs> That's her soul. But it didn't connect with me. It was just, I did it to make her happy. Um, mm. And honestly, I feel like when I moved to Ghana, um, it still didn't really resonate because I was living my best life. You know, the vibes yeah. and it was lovely. Um, but I noticed the deeper I got into my career the deeper I got into certain relationships with friends, um, new f- friends turned family mm. relationships, I found that, hey, I can't do this thing on my own. And I found that I kept on making choices and decisions 
less on what I was seeing and less on what I felt and more on what I felt um, God was guiding me to do. And so a lot of my decisions didn't really necessarily make sense in real time. Like people would, I would say, look, I want to do this. And they're like, why? Like, I remember when I started writing for Forbes at the time, I was on MTN Hitmaker, which was like the biggest talent show in Ghana. Yeah. Um, I had a very big Friday night talk show, which is like prime time. And it had brilliant viewership. And I said to my friends, look, I'm going to leave all of that. And I'm going to Nigeria to write. And everyone's like, so you're not going to be on camera. And I'm like, no. And they're like, there's, you're not doing anything on TV. And I'm like, no, I'm stopping. And they're like, why? You're going to be totally off the grid. Mm. And I was like, yeah, but I feel like this is something that I need to do. The same way I felt like I should leave teaching and come to Ghana. So I'm going to do it. And they're like, but what about your media brand? And I'm like, my media journey is about me trying to actualize my best self in media. Mm. It's not about me being famous in media. So I need to do that. And I feel like this is the next step. This is the next hurdle. Um, and as you kind of go deeper off your own plans and your own track and what makes sense to the people around you and your team, and you start kind of going deeper into just, I know this is, there's something there. Mm. You know the difference between your, your, own flesh saying I want this and your own intuition or I would like to think the Holy Spirit saying look peace move yeah. it, the vibe is different and when it moves you you just go and I, I left all of that and then ended up with my worst day and against all odds and it's it's gone from one strength to another you know and it's not me I, I genuinely sit there every time mm. when a milestone comes through yeah. and it was something I've been praying and working towards I'm just like yeah, there's something bigger going on than I can. Yo, girl, understand. I feel it now, only me. <laughs> no, you're so not let alone. Me tell <laughs> my thing, right? When anybody says, "Oh," because when my show started off, I I, I, I said this everywhere that TWT Pod had been in the works for years, right? Oh, I really? Just, yeah, I did. I just had so much anxiety about the show. Yeah, was it gonna do well? Yeah, was it gonna? So at some point, I just said, "You know what, God? Like this thing has been a nudge in my spirit, right?" Please and please, if it's going to work, make the right people that need to help th- with the show come through. Yeah. Just make it easy for me. Like, I feel like every time that I hear God and I don't follow, it's a bit of a struggle. Yes. But of when course. God is in charge, there's so much ease, right? Yes. But I want, I want to ask, right? Even in those times where God is speaking to you, don't you feel some level of doubt? Because some people who are so experienced in this space who come and yeah. advise you, and you also want to like listen to advice as well. Because you don't want to fail when they give you such advice, you probably want to take it, but you've probably heard God say, you know what, this is the way, but the way is not looking so sure. Um, I think it never looks sure, but I have this video that I'm obsessed with um, of Oprah and she's mm-hmm. sitting down with this TV presenter so many years ago before she was the Oprah we all know and love. Mm-hmm. And she's talking about the launch of her talk show. And he's saying, what will you do if the talk show doesn't go well? And she's like, and if do it well. doesn't, I'll do well. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people associate faith, um, your celebration of God and what he's done in your life as material blessings or financial growth or mm. a new level that makes you bigger and better than maybe your average. Mm. Um, but what people don't understand is this has nothing to do with all of those things. It's about a work in yourself. It's about you undoing and unlearning a lot of the things that you held close to you as an identity and allowing him to fill you up instead mm. and understanding that it's not about being in the limelight every time. It's not about being the, the baddest guy or the hottest girl, or the most stylish or the highest paid. Sometimes it's just about standing in the, the, truth and authenticity of what he's saying but me i like those things too you like those things but honestly if you did it and it didn't get the reaction it had Mm. would you still like them and when you're getting the reaction you you get when i see you dressed up i've seen a lot of good looking guys dress up there's a vibe you have that's on another level and i will say so everyone knows if you see young famous and africans Mm. swanky jerry is has that same thing where that boy is like there's oh, something about him. Th- there's an energy around yeah. him that's different. Yeah. Yeah. He screams stardom. Yeah. And when he dresses up, like he will tell you, I never missed a single shoot. Every time I see Swanky, I'm like, there, Swanky, <laughs> yes, <laughs> give them, walk slow. Mm. Yeah, I'm just obsessed. So I feel like yeah. people tend to, he will make, probably say, oh, peace loves my fashion. I don't. I love the God in him. And if that's how he's translating to the world through his fashion and mm. that skill, that gift is so 
potent that it's mm. you saw I mean the reactions of it was all he dresses amazingly and the same with yourself I mean the way you articulate yourself mm. your energy your authenticity and then fashion on top it's the God in you that's shining out mm. and he's using those mediums to do that and I think that's why it's so appealing to everyone when they see you do it but if you dressed and people didn't even they said oh t- are you well is something wrong with you <laughs> you wouldn't be in a hurry to be calling yourself My, a shista yeah. a <laughs> So I feel like when God enters a situation mm. in everything, peace. That's why I tell them to this the- God thing. I keep telling my <laughs> colleagues, like, how do you all run this space without God? No, no. You know, you know when I when 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 last year, right? It was a very good year for me. I think mm-hmm. things that are going on very smoothly. I think I sort of forgot. I, I didn't forget God. You know, when you're just in the euphoria of your new yeah. life and everything, and I got to a place where I was so exhausted, I had to run back. Yeah. I had to, I, I don't want to make this about church and God, no, but no, I, I mean, that's the core of my being, right? Yeah. So it's a big part of, of my work. So last year I was at this place where, you know, I would probably go out. I would feel so empty because I was relying on myself for a lot of things. Yeah. Right. So I got to a point where if things didn't go well, ooh, bad week, bad month. Mm-hmm. Right. I would call my friends and say, oh my God, it's not happening. But now that I've gotten back into that space where I'm just like, God, this is you, this is you. There's, a, there's much peace. Yeah. No pun intended. But, <laughs> and I'm just in a better place, really. Yeah. And, and I'm happy that, I feel like God brought you on this set just to remind me of some things that, hey, sh- yeah, sis. So now let's move into your latest work. Right. Yes. Young, famous, and African. What inspired that show? Um, I just fell in love with Africa and I fell in love with its people. I met some amazing people in media and entertainment throughout my career, my journey. And I find them super inspiring. I may not be up close with them. Like this is my first meeting with you. Swanky, he'll tell you I've met him in person. I don't really know him personally. Um, Annie and Dibia, the first day I met her was when we literally went on to set. Um, So a lot of these people I'm meeting for the first time, but Mm. I have like a hit list of people that I'm privately obsessed with. Mm. And I kept on just looking at the lineup and I'm like, there is something here. Ironically, um, Toki McKinwa is one of my, my little girl crushes. I love it. She knows it. And (laughs) I always look at her page. I look at her confidence. I look at how she ruthlessly goes for her dreams. I don't have a personal relationship with her, but I was always inspired by that. Yeah. And I actually DM'd her because in 2018, I DM'd her and I'm like, look, I'm looking at your page and you really need a reality show. I'm not a producer. I don't know how to shoot these things, but we need to make a show called Baby Girl for Life and I want to produce it. Wow. And she was like, "Um, you know, people are telling me this, but (laughs) I've just got a lot going on. We'll see. And I hit her back up again, I think in 20 something, 2019, Mm -hmm. 2020. And I was like, look, you're still going and I'm not seeing this reality show. When are you going to astound us? Um, And then... As I kept on messaging her, there was other people that I also were like hyping. I'm like this secret hype woman. And I go into people's (laughs) DMs just going, you're amazing. And I just thought to myself, wait, like, wait, there's a lot of you guys. What what if we brought you all together and showed the world how incredible you are? Wow. And I've, from the British culture, reality TV is like, this is something that we've all grown up with. We love reality TV, not yeah. the big brother kind necessarily, yeah. even though that was also there, um, but more this sort of lifestyle, showing people behind the scenes type thing. So I've really, really wanted to see this for so many years. Um, and I remember sharing with my co-creator, Martin Asari Manquan. He was like, you're coming with another of those <laughs> ideas again, but I think this could work. And I'm really excited about it. So we just started like, taking names and kind of drawing them and saying, how would it work and who would it be? Yeah. Um, we were running around like a little camera guy and trying to record people and see, but it wasn't really a context that was very popular in Africa at that time. Yeah. And so trying to get a, I remember myself and Martin actually met with Toki McKinwa. We met yeah. with, um, I won't say any names actually. We met with a few people, <laughs> but I keep hyping talking because she was the yeah. one of the founding light bulb moments. Yeah. Um, and we met with a few of them and we're like, look, we have this great idea. We think you'd be amazing for it. But it was in its kind of infant baby stages yeah. and it wasn't well articulated. Everyone was really busy. And I think everyone knew me as the Forbes lady. Yeah. So it was such an out of context conversation. From where to where? <laughs> like, you're a businesswoman. Where are you doing entertainment interviews? Yeah. 
Um, and then over time, I think, like I was saying, when God puts something in your heart, he will not let you put it down. Mm. And it keeps on just haunting you. Mm. And I became very selfish with that vision. And literally, I, I wouldn't let it change. I wouldn't let anyone tell me, no, you should do it like this. Or you're look. I just kept sticking to exactly what I knew I had in my mind. And at this time, Netflix wasn't even really in Africa. It wasn't a big um, connection. They weren't looking at penetrating the African market. Yeah. And I remember reaching out to them before they even had a presence in Africa saying, why don't you guys have a presence in Africa? I'd met them at a conference. And it was just a chit chat thing, not anything major. Um, as time went on, we connected with a few other studios, streaming platforms, and we were having these conversations. But I felt that Netflix really got it. They kept it they in its it. original form. Yeah. And that selfishness with the vision, selfishness with yourself, selfishness with your dreams, that pureness of what that, that kind of fetus stage embryotic looking dream, um, they, they understood it and they believed in it and they everything behind it to make sure that we had the best lineup exactly in the way we envisioned it. And I mean, the rest has been five, four days of history right now. This is like my first Crazy. interview since the show launched. Thank you. Um, first interview here. If anyone wants to catch it. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, no, um, it's, it literally, they, I had an amazing team. We had an amazing writers, sound stylists, um, producers, directors, the team were incredible. And I think as we put it together and as each day we went on set and saw this magic unfold, we were like, this has got nothing to do with us. And as it unfolded, we realized this was nothing to do with us. Like this is a whole nother movement that he was trying to do. And I really am blessed for the opportunity to have such incredible artists come with us and trust us to portray their truth. And I feel like that's what the show has done. It's really broken a lot of um, stereotypical notions of what is acceptable to share within mm. our African culture with the world. And I feel that I've watched so many brave, courageous Africans saying, I'll own my truth. I'm, I'm going to own my highlights and my shame. I'm going to share with you my truth. I don't mind how it, you receive it because I know that people will learn from it. Mm -hmm. People will be inspired by it. Mm -hmm. Some people will overcome situations by just seeing me live that out and knowing that I can be the most successful, incredible person within my industry, but I have real life stuff that happened to me too. And I hope that that's what a lot of people got from it because I was inspired every day I saw some of these cast members. I was, I was too, but... I'm I'm gonna ask, right? Yeah. Um, the show is doing so well. There are noticeable Africans on it, but for some reason, I'm finding any Ghanaians. Uh, aren't Ghanaians trying to shoot you now? Like, where is our Ghanaian <laughs> representative on the show? Between people looking at why there no Ghanaians and when season two, you're, them you're, two questions. What did Martin have to say about it? Because Martin is also Ghanaian. Yes, we're both Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. um, I think people didn't realize when um, Young, Famous, and African was at its cast recruitment stage yeah we spoke to so many incredible people if you remember right. i said Tokyo mckim was one of the first people we spoke yeah. to because i communicated with her the idea she wasn't on the show um much to a lot of nigerians upset she wasn't yeah. on the show yeah. because a lot of people had busy schedules it True. was new it's not there's nothing like this that's been done before yeah. reality tv is usually associated with people that are not very well known mm -hmm. or people that are not at the height of their career where we have the A-list, the mm -hmm. best of the best. So it was a weird concept, I think, for a lot of people. And there were Ghanaians that we spoke to. Um, I definitely, I'm extremely in love with everything that Ghana has given me and Martin and our careers. But I think people didn't realize Young, Famous and African is a new concept. And it's not something that is common for us. We usually associate reality TV with Big Brother. So if yeah. you go to a very established star and you say, go on a show that go on a TV concept that is usually associated with not really well-known people, a lot of people will say, yeah, I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause. And that's what happened. That was the main thing that I think a lot of people were just hesitant and they weren't sure about um, what it would look like and whether it would be a good, um, yeah, what it would look like and whether it would be a good fit for their brand and where they were going. I think we know better now because the show is still number one on Netflix. <laughs> How do you feel about this show that you've always had in your mind? You put it, you put it, the idea of the show up until now, and it's now number one across board. 
so does that sort of make you feel like yes i was right god, this was god move this was the right move to do how do you feel about the fact that this show is finally doing so well did you expect it to do this well um i was very confident in the work and the team that we'd put together and i felt that we really created magic and i could see that there was a something bigger than us moving this whole motion um and this whole vision so i felt that it would do very well um i didn't expect what has happened i wasn't ready for that i i I definitely didn't know i've not seen anything um have this reaction before so i just didn't expect it Um, and i'm very grateful but then again i always sit down saying that i know it has nothing to do with me because um there's certain outcomes that you just know that's not that wasn't expected (laughs) that wasn't i have not seen it before so i don't know how that came to be and i think it's just really really god putting things guiding every single step and putting it together to get that result amazing peace you're one of the hottest women on the continent since when everybody knows that since yeah, I didn't forever know. but i've never seen you project any sort of relationship or mm. mushiness online is this intentional um well it depends on what the purpose of being online is for you i think everyone has a different um goal and a different um motivation as Mm. to why they post why they Mm. repost why they are online what they want to share um i am someone who i'm actually very private um everyone knows my first love is food (laughs) so you guys see a lot of that i'm i'm Mm. constantly making out with a good plate of food but you guys just don't seem to notice that because it's not a a human being is food gonna cuddle you (laughs) at night babes Ah, if you eat the right fufu and soup, you'll be sure. <laughs> <laughs> the right fufu and soup, the right eba and goosey can just... Problem. Right? It gets I, you good. Please, let me tell you what the problem is. At 11 a.m., I'm turning eba in my kitchen. Right, but that's the right time. No, but like, look, that's going to seal my thighs. Look at me. I see thickness. <laughs> no, but you're like defined as well, ain't bad. Yeah, I'm trying. The gym is helping out. Yeah, yeah. you're looking good. But let's All those South let's African come moves and... Because you're about to segue into food now. I'm not really having it. So, <laughs> is there one uncle somewhere that is, that's saying, you know what, this shit's going to do well. That's always encouraging you at, in the evenings when you're tired. It's just, just somebody somewhere who's just really dusty. You know, I'm you. really blessed to have a brilliant community around me that support me and believe in me. And they've been there since day one. Um, and I think without that community of people supporting and believing me, it'll be very hard to keep going. Um, but in terms of the phrase one uncle, I'm not subscribing to that because I, I don't have an uncle per se, but, but I have an amazing community of people that believe in me and have supported me. And I work extremely hard because I understand that here that the word uncle means something. That no, when we say uncle, like boyfriend, lover. Oh. A dotting man, which uncle? No, no, but I don't know. Understand. You can't be asking me these questions when you're looking this way because if I say yes and I spoil my market, what happens then? Okay. I don't know why you're asking which me. Market? Which market? What do you mean? Weren't you saying I was the hottest girl? That means there's other people that are thinking, let me oh, say, so you don't want to spoil the market. No, oh. no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, um, so, are you single? Because even if I got here when I told people that I'm going to be having let me tell couch. you, I'm going to give you the most honest answer I've ever okay. given in my life. I am married to the vision that God has for my Jehovah. life. And if if there is a man in that vision, you guys will know about him when it's time. The same way Young, Famous and African was something that I've been married to for four years mm. and no one knew existed. Ah. But now you are seeing our wedding day and we're all extremely Please, happy not, to share with the world. You're not a leading woman for nothing. <laughs> so the way you did so for me, I think when... When people are looking for an individual, Mm. it takes a village. It takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to follow through a dream. It takes a village for any big moment in your life. And I'm a product of many different villages that are always believing me at each point in my life. But when God decides that peace, your baby has been cooked, it's Mm. time to give birth like he did with YFA. And the world is celebrating now with something. Me and Martin are always looking at each other like, did you know? (laughs) And I hope that when that day comes and i get to share with the world the person that god has ordained and chosen for me there'll be no doubt in my mind that yeah you guys will may see um kind of the side profile of who who that individual may be or like the nose Peace. <laughs> I bet you win. as i throw you out of reach you know even agree take you win you're not for, you're not for woman for nothing oh god I, I, 
I've been trying to just even just allow me just get into this just more. You know, even allow. What is, it, what is it you're looking no, for? No, it's fine. Let's just let's move on. Mm, okay. Since, so, peace is not saying she's single or she's dating. So we don't just know. We're just we're just there. But it's fine. Let's move on to your your work as um the founder of an NGO, right? You have an NGO that's focused on helping young people get educated yeah. so that they can focus on entrepreneurship and in turn affect the economy of Africa. Yes. What inspired that? How's that work going? Um, I never really left the classroom. I've always loved being a teacher yeah. and Aim High Africa was really about that. Mm. I really wanted to keep educating. I really want to still be a teacher to a degree mm. and I have Aim High Africa to still enable me to do that. Yeah. Um, I've been very blessed to move out of the corporate world in London and venture as an entrepreneur in different spheres in mm. Africa and it's been extremely successful by God's grace. So mm. the little things I've learned and the other executives that are training these young entrepreneurs to build their own sustainable and scalable businesses is yeah. a dream come true and as I watch that ecosystem thrive and grow aggressively I just see people's lives being changed and for me that was the original goal i think no man is an island and no man can really build a big change without creating an impact i'm the result of people giving me opportunities and believing in me and so in my own tiny little way i would like to try and do that and that's what aim high africa has been all about and as i grow from strength to strength it's also growing from strength to strength so yeah it's really exciting what's happening on that side of things i love it well done Thank um you. so for young famous and african right uh, we're going to have a season two anytime soon. How you, are you, is it the same people that's going to be on season two? What are we looking forward to? Cause the show is already a success. Yeah. Um, I think right now I'm excited. Um, I'm very blessed about the reactions yeah. and about, um, what the world is really saying about the cast. Mm. Um, and that's really my main focus at the moment. If there is a season two, I mean, similar to every other thing, when the baby's ready to pop, you guys will hear about mm. it. But um, for the TV show, I just realized I could sound. Um, but yes, oh. um, I feel like, yeah, the time will tell. I'm not, I don't really have a specific plan for how things will go. Yeah. I just know as long as God is in it, I will never fail. And if I do fail, I'll learn and get better. So I'm really happy about the reception. I'm really proud of every single cast member. Mm. Um, the show was designed to celebrate their, how amazing they are. And I really hope that everyone feels that same way and mm. sees a celebration of their individual excellence. Mm. So yeah, I'm enjoying that for now. Amazing. But, I, they've been they've been um, conversations around the show being scripted. Is that is that true? Is Not it, at all. Um, every scene, every action on that show, every voice, every description, every emotion mm. that is being projected on that show is a hundred percent authentic. Um, we cannot control what someone does and doesn't say. Mm. Um, it's an unscripted show, so legally you cannot create a script. And I mean, Swanky put it best of all. He's like my little baby. I love him, mm -hmm. but. He, we were on an interview recently for CNBC and he said, um, there's not a point throughout this entire production that I was ever given a piece of paper to say, this is what's about to happen. And I think that that way he articulated it was the mm. most authentic way of showing whether we were scripted or not, because no one ever had a plan. Mm. And I think that was also what made a lot of the celebrities we approached scared yeah. because it was like, what do you mean? We know Nollywood. We know how we act. What do you mean? There's no paperwork. There's no storyline what mm. i have i'm the story uh, what do you so i think um i understand why a lot of people think that because there was so much happening but no you you bring together some of the biggest most successful business people mm. entrepreneurs celebrities musicians and then you tell them to live out their larger than average lives you're going to get a lot of larger Bro. than average reactions <laughs> and that's what what you saw um but it was totally real people living their real journeys and being yeah. authentic and i think um, if you look online about who they were even before the show came about, a lot of it is woven into their real life that you all know, mm. but you probably never heard them express it in the most truest, authentic, unedited mm. way. And I think that's why the show has been really impactful. It's it's real. So guys, we've come to the end of Women's Month and I'm so happy that the woman ending the month is Peace Hyde. She's a force. She has defied the odds in so many ways from her work when she was in London as a teacher to moving to Ghana to her work with Forbes and now Young Famous and African. And Peace, do you have anything to say to the women who are listening to you today? Um, I, I always have something to say, unfortunately. Unfortunately, <laughs> but um, I think just 
to be honest, it's about honoring your true vision um, and being okay with whatever that looks like. Um, regardless of what people label it as, regardless of what people define you as, um, form your own labels, form your own ones that are true to who you are. Um, if you're not softly spoken, if you're not the sweetest thing, own it. Because that's probably your gift to take you to your next level. Mm. Um, but don't try to fit into the box that the world or your community or your culture has defined for you. Create your own. And no matter what happens along the step of the, along each step of the way, honor that. And you'll definitely find out your best self in that process. And don't forget the God factor because it's about who you are inside as opposed to what your gender is or being defined by those norms and values that are associated to what your body parts look like. Look at the soul of who you are and what his plan is for you and you are unstoppable if you do that. Thank you. I feel like this is for me more than the women shall <laughs> <laughs>